a quick video on something I found while floating around the internet. I go to a lot of the audiophile vlogs on uh, that are just web pages themselves, but also um, more recently I've been on a lot of Facebook vlogs. Anyway, I came across information on this new vacuum tube. New exciting vacuum tube. It said it was going to be released in 2016. It looks like this site hasn't been updated that carefully. That's why I'm kind of wondering what the status is on this guy. But it's a new vacuum tube. And they used a vacuum fluorescent display technology. You know, basically the same envelope they use for their displays. You can see the little wire going down the middle. That would be the the wire you see on dis, uh, vacuum fluorescent displays. You see that little wire going through the middle. It does have a heater. It's about a 17 milliamp heater. And they say these things don't get hot, which kind of... Or they even say it doesn't generate heat, which is obviously not true. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of... I've got a lot of interest in this product. And I've also got a lot of curiosities. This is the data sheet. And it does uh, expose some of the shortcomings of this device, unfortunately. I guess if you just want the tube sound, maybe this is a good way to generate it. You know, do you really want to generate sound into your audio just so it sounds like a tube? I, I don't really agree with that concept. I, I like tubes in voltage gain stages. Um, they're very fast, they're very clean, and that's where they're good, you know. They're they're really not a great solution for power amps. If I had to put one stage in my system with a vacuum tube, it would be on the input stages. Um, and possibly in an RF situation like a tuner. I think a vacuum tube tuner I'm a lot of prejudice because I have a real fine vacuum tube tuner. Uh, I think there's some advantages to going vacuum tube. Um, probably the best sounding tuner I've ever had. But that's incidental and of course you know we know we get second harmonic which kind of gives you that warm fuzzy sound that a tube makes. At any rate this uh, data sheet, they're going to call this a new tube 6P1 twin triode. It's a very interesting tube because it can work at very low voltages. It can work as low as 5 volts for anode voltage. Practically about 10 volts. Um, it can run quite well at 10 to 12 volts. You can see it can go all the way to 80 as well though. Which actually might be of interest to me in a future project. I got a couple ideas that I'd like to use these to play with, you know. I I hope they make them available to experimenters. They say they're going to, but most of the data on this uh, website is a couple years old already. So I, I hope this is ongoing. I'm going to have to look into this further. I'm not sure... Oh, symbol FR number 7. Okay. Resonant frequency of 5.8 kilohertz. That could be an issue. Highest voltage. That's just the grid voltage. A lot of interesting detail in here. I'll let you uh, peruse it on your own. I'm going to take photographs um, towards the end of this video, and I will show you all. The, and you can look at those and freeze them. To show, I'll just talk through them right now, and then at the end of the video, you'll see photo, still photo shots so that you can better look at. Hopefully. Because some of these are sideways, I'm going to hold the camera sideways and shoot them correctly for you. So here it looks cool, you know. Basic circuit. It's real encouraging. It's, it's a neat technology. You know, imagine being able to make tubes that you can mount flat on a PC board. Or same way vacuum fluorescent display. And here's where we go sideways with a bunch of curves, and I will give you uh, shots on these. Still shots at the end of the video. Um, that hopefully you can reverse a little bit. It's going to be tough because I can't really show the whole thing. So, scroll your head over sideways. It's mostly just the, uh, what do we have here, current versus voltage. 
and you can run them quite high in voltage, but you don't have to. That's what's interesting. See here, this anode voltage as it gets up. They got this line here, which I'm not, I should research what that means exactly. I guess it's just this line that much uh, current dissipated. I don't know. And you can, you know, better yet, peruse this site for yourself. This is one I'll flip for you at the end because I do want to talk about this circuit. This is what really concerns me about this whole thing. Well, just look at it sideways with me. You can have some imagination. What's deceiving about this diagram, they show it as an input, you know, like a phono input output buffer type thing here. Not a whole lot of gain, maybe for a phono input, not for a phonograph input, but for like a mic input maybe, I don't know. Basic circuit they're saying. So they're really not doing a whole lot of implication from this point to this point. They're it's basically a inline circuit, you know, a, a buffer circuit, which is dis disturbing because here we've got they kind of dream without circles, so that you don't really see it if you're not a trained eye here. But these are two JFETs. You got a JFET output and a JFET input. You know, I could just probably solder a wire from here to here. <laughs> You know, and cut the tube out, and solder a wire from here to here, and this circuit probably wouldn't be that much different, except I'd have less distortion. It wouldn't have the tube sound, so, yeah, I'm, you can see my problem with this. And the reason they're doing this is, if you go back to the spec sheet, there's very little gain in this poor thing. Amplification factor U, 14.5. And that seems to me to be the death nail to this thing. You know, hopefully they can progress this technology into something more usable. So it definitely has some interesting interesting ideas. Here's your THD, and you can see it's not low distortion. These tube... Uh, don't get me on tube, people. I mean, I do know there's some... They do have a nice sound, you know, and it's a nice warm sound, but it's basically even harmonic distortion. And they say certain instruments sound better with uh, tube amps, you know. And yeah, that's just changing the way they sound, though. If you listen to a violin on an uh, amplifier that has this much distortion, it's going to sound different. You know, complex sounds like a violin are really good to do comparisons with. Sometimes they get a little bit too obsessed with how well an amp does with a sine wave and I think real music is a different animal, but that's my opinion on the uh, purist side. People who really have to have that tube sound, I, I guess. You know, I'd, I'd like to make some practical use out of this thing and not just the tube sound, you, you know. There's all kinds of ways you can add distortion. I'm sure you can engineer a totally solid state solution to uh, adding second harmonic distortion to an amplifier. It wouldn't be PC, and everybody would, I'm sure the tube people would just croak at you. Of course, tubes have the advantage of being very fast, very good transient response, speed. And they generally run without a whole lot of feedback, which makes them have good transient response and good speed. A quick look at some of the features of this guy. As I mentioned, it's uh, just a vacuum fluorescent display that they've managed to put some sounds into real vacuum tube sound warm distortion mm, nice warm distortion small size I really like that feature high reliability long life 30,000 hours that'd be great you know you could solder them in and not worry about them power savings they don't get as hot and they can even run on batteries so it's kind of a neat technology I just wish I'd get some gain out of these puppies. Frequently asked questions. And this is quite revealing. And I already talked about some of this. They don't really have it available out too much. They don't really want to tell you the cost. They want you to contact them. And I already talked about supply voltage. No, it's not going to replace this. It doesn't have the it's not interchangeable to a 12AX7. Obviously, it's not going to fit. ATX7 can take a lot more than 80 volts, I believe. Although that's not out of the range of it. But I believe the 12ATX7 is going to have way more gain. 
Trapped heated. Indirectly heated one. Voltage and current of the heater. And yeah, I've talked about some of this stuff. 17 milliamps, 0.7 volts. Uh, so they went direct heated just for heat efficiency, thermal efficiency. It's microphonic. You'd think it'd be a lot less microphonic. That's kind of cool. I like the shape. And you probably won't need a socket if it's that reliable. So why why make it the conventional shape? Why make it small and as short as possible? At least less inductance. So the smaller you can make things, the better in general for audio. Because every little inch is a little bit of inductance, a little chance to pick up more interference. Uh, it's a nice, warm, beautiful, mm, even harmonic distortion. I presume. Yes, I would. I'm going to have to, uh, I really would like to get my hands on a couple of these and get them in the lab. I also wonder how noisy these guys are. You see it at the bottom of this graph, I mean, basically your distortion goes up with level, but it's distortion plus noise. And you can see that at the bottom of the graph, Noise is contributing here. Ten percent? Yeah, I don't think I want to use that high. At zero dB. Like I was saying about speed though, you can see how fast these guys are. Go way high in frequency for an audio device. And I'll skip over the reliability test stuff. If you really need this stuff, you should be downloading this sheet for yourself. And note, notice and caution. It's kind of interesting that the warranty period is only a year. Don't scratch it. And some obvious stuff, I guess. Anyway, interesting device. Just needs more gain. I wonder why they didn't use both sections of that triode instead of adding in those buffers with the JFETs. I guess it's just a matter of gain. Is there any is there any uh, global feedback or local feedback at all? There really isn't. This is basically a distortion generator. It's basically a distortion generator. I guess you can say there's a little bit of uh, maybe this gives you a little local feedback for these JFET stages. There's really nothing to give you local feedback for the uh, well. Is that true? Interesting. Well, interesting. So this is obviously a bias setting. And of course this is a voltage, so this is just a fixed voltage cross resistor. So these two don't really connect such that way. They're both just connected to this voltage rail. Okay. A little confusing at first. So this voltage is going to here. It really has nothing to do with this variable resistor, which has to do with the bias. Grid bias. Interesting. I'd like to see him use both sides, you know, if 14 times 14, if it's only unity gain circuit, is the current capacity just so low that you can't do anything with it? Is that the issue? Is that why they're using a JFET which needs no current? How big is this resistor? That'd be the... Could it really be that, Matt? That big? So the anode power dissipation is only 1.7 milliwatts so that's why they didn't try to drive the output directly I, I kinda hope they take a circuit like this and use both stages you know and compound the gain almost like a you know one multiplying the other two stage amplifier instead of a three stage amp with only one stage being the tube of course the distortion would double up too which might not be great at some point how much tube effect do you want? Of course, to buy a circuit like this, you could have a bypass, you know, you could have a resistive bypass path, bypass the whole thing. I don't know if it does phase inversion or not, I have to figure that out. Um, this would be no phase inversion, I think. This would be a phase inversion. And this, I th think, would be no phase inversion. I don't know, I could be wrong. To think about it deeper, look at it more carefully. 
This view of a module is kind of cool. It gives you a relative size of that new tube. It's not that tiny. Of course, it's the size of a vacuum display tube, you know, that's what it is. They sold 90 headphone amp kits at the Maker Fair in uh, 2016. So yeah, it's a real product. I wish I would have gotten my hands on one of those. Love to play with this device. I don't see, yeah, there's a JFET there. Now here's the circuit for that headphone preamp. I see they did use a JFET on the input. Looks that the output is driving it directly though. Kind of hard to see it so faint looking. Yeah, I shouldn't be hand shooting. Oh well. Put the tripod away already and then I'm getting afterthoughts here.